Hello, uh, my name is uh, Jasper Oprins. Uh, I'm 18 years, old, 18 years old. I live in the Netherlands. Uh, today I'm going to tell you about my story of uh, GIA. There are several uh, topics I want to talk about. Uh, first, the beginning of my story. Uh, at the age of four and a half, I was diagnosed with GIA. Uh, at first, I didn't really know I had this disease, but as I got uh, older and older, I felt it more. It began to affect my uh, life heavily, and it all started at the age of 12. At 12, I went to uh, high school, and football was my biggest passion. I've always loved playing football. It was also my first, uh, it was also my uh, f first season playing on a big field. Uh, the beginning of the season was difficult because I didn't know much about my illness at that time. Uh, it was a big step for me to go from a small to a big field. Uh, in the beginning, I noticed it quite a bit. Uh, my knees were bothering me a lot. Because of this, I had also uh, to go to the family doctor. Uh, my parents wanted to check if there was something wrong. The doctor concluded that I had been still of a, uh, I had been sitting still for too long and that the step to the big field was too high. I was only allowed to play half a training session and half a match at that time. This bothered me. I was different from the rest, at least that is how it felt to me. And that feeling is still not completely gone. I'm just different from the majority of the population. I have a GIA. Important things uh, about uh, juvenile arthritis. Um, I myself don't really have anything that I can, can do. I just have, have my limits. There are a few things that are tough and may not be possible for me to do. This is not a bad thing at all. Everyone has something they can do. Besides, it's just part of my life. This is who you are and the way you are is good. You will have to find your limits. And you cannot know in advance uh, which things will go well and which things won't go well. You will really have to experience this yourself and admit when something isn't really going well. It's not bad if you can do something or if something hurts too much. After that too, everyone does. You have to deal with medications. You have to deal with a lot of medications. I have a lot of uh, I've had a lot of different med ones. Uh, lots of different eye drops, different pills, and also two different syringes. The eye drops have never been difficult and have never bothered me. The only difficult thing for me was that uh, was not to forget to take them. The pills I've never had much trouble with either. The injections were a different story. I started getting MTX injections when I was 12 years old because the dose of pills became too high and it was easier to inject. This was completely new to me and I didn't know what to expect. My mom always put the syringes in for me. I was afraid that I would put the syringe in wrong, so I was uh, scared to do it on my own. I just had to grab as much belly fat as I could, which is not too easy on me, so mom could put the syringe in. Overall, that went pretty easily. At first, I thought it wouldn't bother me so, so much because I already had to get blood samples very often. In my head, it seemed fine because I knew the feeling of needles. I didn't want my mom to put the injections in of one in one of my thighs because it uh, it hurts too much. In consolation with the hospital, it was agreed that the syringes would only be put into my belly on the left and right. After a few months, I couldn't tolerate that either, and I also suffered from a side effect that the medicine had. It made me nauseous. This uh, became a trigger. I got nauseous every time I saw the color yellow. There also came a time when I did not want to do the syringes at all because I was uh, thinking about getting nauseous. I did not want, uh, I was nauseous even before I had to take the syringe. Sometimes I wouldn't say anything, hoping that mom, and dad, mom or dad would forget that I still had to take the shot. I, I, always looked, I always looked up to it so much. In fact, I had a stomach ache all day long. At a certain point, I was done with it and so were my parents. My mom would sit my, by my bedside for hours on Sunday evenings just to get me to, the do, to do the injection. Constantly struggling, crying and having a stomach ache because I was so anxious. We also reported this to the hospital. The hospital indicated that, it could also take, that I could also take it orally. 
put it in food or drink. This went well for a few times until I, it also made me nauseous. And again, I like, looked up to it every week. The name, uh, the, then came the moment I turned 16. The Netherlands, you can make your own decisions from the age of 16 in the medical world. At this age, in the medical world, you are considered an adult. I myself was getting more and more entitled to my medication. My valet mirror also showed that there were uh, less and less anti eggs in my blood. The doctor indicated that there were uh, other options in terms of medications. Humira was mentioned, a pressure pen, which also, uh, which almost didn't hurt at all because uh, it has not. Uh, Humira was mentioned, a pressure pen, which almost didn't hurt at all, but has not been on the market as long as MTX. I chose to take the Humira. I wanted to. Uh, I wanted that. 100% for sure, and that's because I wanted to get rid of the MTX. I didn't want to take it anymore. I was so done with it, making me nauseous all the time that I wanted to stop it. My parents didn't agree at first because little was known, known about what Humira does later in life. For this, we had several appointments at the hospital. In the end, they went along with my decision. It was my life and illness. They let me decide. In retrospect, this turned out to be one of my best choices ever. I learned how to put my syringes in the hospital. At the beginning, my, also, my, mother helped also, uh, my mother also helped me with the syringes. This time, I did trust myself uh, with the syringes. I wanted to try it myself. The first time I did it my, uh, I did myself, I had, a bit, I had a little bit of trouble. But after a few times, I managed it well and little little to no trouble. Sometimes I had a lump where I injected it, but it was usually gone after a day. This injection help also had no side effects. This was the most important thing for, for me. I didn't care about the injection at all. As long as I didn't get any side effect from it, I'm fine with it. The syringe also worked great for me. The inflammation in my eye immediately, immediately became a lot less, but it was, oh, I bu but I was also happy to finally be rid of nausea before and after every time I had to take the shot. Uh, mental health. Mental health is very important and perhaps the most important to keep an eye on with GIA. I've suffered a lot from that. Mental health is something that plays a very big role in GIA. Many people underestimate this. You don't notice this in yourself until you start going to, through uh, puberty. Help is very important. Asking for help is not a problem at all, and certainly not weak. People who dare to ask for help are strong. Everyone needs help, but not everyone dares to ask for it. I also had trouble with it, and I noticed that. That is why it is important to keep an eye on people with GIA, even if they say they are doing well. Parents also play an important role in this. It takes a lot of attention and commitment from parents to support the child where needed. I didn't feel understood when I was 12. People didn't, didn't understand what I was feeling. I didn't want any more help either because I didn't think that was necessary. I had already talked to enough people in my opinion. I had talked to several people the years before, both one-on-one -on -one and with the whole family. My parents and I then had a conversation at the hospital and were referred to a special psychologist at the hospital. Until then, I had only gotten help from outside counselors, so they were not specialized in people with an illness like mine. What is very important is that there needs to be a click with the person who is going to help you. It was there for me, from the first moment. My mental help started with explain, explaining what, a, what I was actually suffering from. It was mainly about MTX. I had the problem that I had been uh, traumatized by MTX. Whenever I saw the color yellow, I got nauseous. This happened not only in my private life or free time, but also at school. This didn't feel nice to me. I got nauseous from the color yellow because the liquid in the syringes was also yellow. This is called the, uh, the Pavlov reaction. So with me, it was about the color yellow or the food and drink that my medication has, has ever been in. Every time I put a syringe with the yellow liquid in it, I got nauseous and sick. So every time I saw the association with the medicine, I also got nauseous. 
this was remedied when I went to the psychologist. There were some things that I didn't know, that I didn't want to eat or drink anymore because of the color or because of the medicine was ever in it. I had to constantly think about it and tell myself that the medicine was not in it. Eventually, this helped me so much that I, that I now like all food and drink again that is either yellow or even have my medicine in it. Also, I worked on myself. That, that this is just who I am and if something doesn't work out for me, it's no big deal. It is already clever enough what I can do. I also made a book about all this. I, really, I had really good help with this from a young person, which helped me a lot. I felt understood by him. He also had a lot of contact with children who have GIA. He helped me recognize the color yellow as a normal color. That doesn't make me sick every time I see it. He also helped me accept myself. That has been the most important part because at first I didn't accept myself the way I was. I learned that I had listened, that I had to listen to my body and when, I'm, uh, when I feel my body doesn't like it, I should just stop. That's how I recovered. This is why you have to ask for help when things don't go your way for a while. This is not a sign of weakness, but rather a sign that you're strong. You don't have to uh, do everything alone. And it's certainly okay to ask for help. Sport, uh, sports, uh, playing football is and will always be my greatest passion. First thing I asked, uh, it was the first thing I asked the doctor in the hospital uh, when I was four, if I could uh, still play soccer. Uh, I was told that I would most likely not be able uh, to play sports anymore by the doctor. This was hard for me. This was hard for me to accept. Football is everything for me, but I fought my way up. Because of my uh, great perseverance, I'm now on the first team every year in my age uh, group, despite my GIA. I didn't want to give up my passion, so I always kept, uh, kept playing football, even when I uh, couldn't. Even when I couldn't, my father had to carry me off the field because I had so much pain. But I made it. I certainly don't recommend continuing when you are in pain. Other people also don't see uh, when I play the game that I have to sleep for two hours afterwards to recover and can't do anything else that day either. I'm well aware that not everyone with GIA can achieve what, with football what I have been able to achieve, but what I want to pass on is try to keep following your passion. If you are in pain, of course you have to take a break, but try to keep going with your passion or something you enjoy for as long as possible. Thank you, Jasper. Other questions? No questions? Okay. Hello, I'm Ingrid from the Netherlands. I'm a nurse. I have a question. A great talk, first. Yes. Thank you. Very uh, inspiring, and yeah, I see it all the time. The, the things you tell. Um, I had a question. Did you had any uh, anti uh something for the nausea pills? You didn't get anything, or? Uh, yeah. Um, like a folium zuur. Hmm? Folium zuur. Folium zuur. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but no, but not for the nausea. You didn't get anything. No. Or well, okay. Your mother is. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> But uh, I think it was very uh, visible. You you uh, make your journey very good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nat from United Kingdom. Um, thank you for sharing that experience with us. Um, just got a um, question about your diet or eating habits. Because um, I'm working with a patient. Um, we try to develop um, like a physical activity intervention, also some kind of eating habits, like introduce some more food to help them to reduce their inflammation. Um, just wondering if you had any experience of um, any food or anything could help with your nauseous. Uh, no, I no, I just uh, didn't really uh, search for a solution to the nausea. I mm -hmm. just kept on eating what I liked, and it's nothing unusual or something. Right, so um, no food could help with your nauseous. 
Not that, not that I know. Okay, thank you. Thanks again, Jasper. That was an amazing um, presentation. I, 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 can I ask, did you take it at, in the evening your metatrexate? Did that help? I always uh, took it in the evening, and I, uh, yeah, I never tried it, uh, never tried it much, like uh, in the afternoon or something. At a lot of time, I just it was for me. Uh, um, um, wait, <laughs> after a training, I took it. Yeah. Uh, because I could train then, uh, and I didn't get nausea before the training, so I could also train. Yeah, because in clinic I would advise patients and parents to take it maybe after tea, but maybe it's not, it, it seems that it doesn't make any difference, you still have nausea, so yeah. maybe that advice is, I need to take that off my list. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Hi Jasper, and thank you for your um, inspiring talk. Uh, I'm a psychologist from Iceland, um, and as I hear it, it's... Uh, your um, nausea was very psychologically triggered. Um, and I see that all the time in the, in the practice. Um, my question is, um, was it difficult to seek psychological assistance? Yeah, for me it was uh, really difficult. I uh, didn't think I, need, I needed it. Um, I uh, wanted to do it all, my, all on my own mm -hmm. and didn't even want help from my parents. Um, but I, uh, it took me really long to finally uh, seek psychological help in okay. the end. Um, did you think that, um, that like seeking psychological help was um, a sign of you being, then you should have to be crazy or something like that? Yeah, it was, at first it was a sign of weakness to me, uh, oh. but eventually it's, it's you are strong if you seek help. Exactly. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you, Jasper.